So I want to remind you about one-sided limits. When we have a little mark after the value we're approaching, it's not about the sign of the value, it's the way we're approaching. So when we have x approaches 2 with this minus sign after, it means x is approaching 2, but it's always 2 minus a bit. So we're coming from the, the left. This would be a, a left-hand limit. Whereas here, x is approaching 2, but x is always 2 plus a bit. So this is the right-hand limit. Okay, so here we have this function. We have the graph. We can see that as x gets closer to 2, see the outputs are getting closer to 2. So we would say as x gets closer to 2, sorry, from the left hand, from the low side, so as we go in this way, it looks like the outputs are getting closer and closer to 2. On the other hand, as x comes to 2 from the high side, so from the right, now the outputs are getting closer and closer to 1. So from our graph, we can see the left-hand limit is 2, whereas the right-hand limit is 1. Remember, in order for the limit to exist, it exists if and only if the left, -hand, right, left and right-hand limits exist and agree. These don't agree, so for this function, the limit as x tends to 2, without regard to either side, doesn't exist. If, no matter how you approach 2, um, you don't have the same value, so a single value emerging there, then the limit doesn't exist. Okay, now this is actually the function that I've graphed here. So if you, um, if you didn't have the graph, you could work with the function itself. So let's say someone wanted to know what's the limit as, as x approaches 2 from below of f of x, then since x is always 2 minus a bit, when x is less than 2, you use this function. So you're really talking about the limit as x tends to 2 from below of 4 minus x. But if x is getting closer and closer to 2, 4 minus x will get closer and closer to 2 as well. If we look at the limit as x tends to 2 from above, so that x is always 2 plus a bit, well, if x is greater than 2, in this function we use um, x over 2. So we're talking about the limit as x tends to 2 from above of x over 2. If x is getting closer and closer to 2, closer and closer to 2 divided by 2 will get closer and closer to 1. So again, we were able to obtain the limits, this time using, with, using the expression that defines the function rather than looking at the graph. Both ways work. Let's look at a couple more examples here. Um, Absolute value is a big one, right? Absolute value is kind of a piecewise function because um, when the number's negative, it, it uh, behaves one way. When the number's positive, it behaves another way. So let's look at this limit here. If x is going to 1, but from the high side, so that x is always 1 plus a bit, then this number will always be a little bit more than 1. A little bit more than 1, take away 1, has got to be positive. So absolute value leaves positive numbers alone. So what we really have is the square root of 2x times x minus 1 over the absolute value is going to leave that alone. So I can just drop the absolute value bars. It's going to leave it alone because x is more than 1. More than 1, take away 1 is still positive. Now I can see that I can cancel. So this is really going to be the limit as x tends to 1 from above of the square root of 2x. If x is getting closer and closer to 1, then this will get closer and closer to 2, so the limit will be the square root of 2. In this case, though, if x is approaching 1 from the low side, so x is always a little less than 1, a little less than 1 take away 1 will be negative. So what the absolute value will do in that case is multiply that negative number by another negative to make it positive. So the absolute value of x minus 1 would be the opposite of x minus 1 if x is a number that's less than 1 because this would be negative. So the absolute value would put an extra negative to take the opposite of that negative number. So now the x minus 1's cancel. We have the square root of 2x divided by negative 1. So that's the limit as x tends to 1 from below of negative square root of 2x. And that limit will be negative square root of 2x as x gets closer and closer to 1. So being able to consider left and right hand limits makes it possible for us to simplify this, this absolute value expression and figure out what's going on. One place where abs absolute value, or where left and right hand limits, uh, one-sided limits, 
are really important is when we're considering infinite limits. Let's think about what happens here. We have one over x minus one, and x is going to one, but from the left. So x is always one minus a bit. So you can think what's happening here is we have one in the numerator. X is slightly less than one, so x minus one is gonna be a negative number. Now, that number is gonna get closer and closer to zero, though, as x gets closer and closer to one. So we really have one divided by what are tinier and tinier negative numbers. Well, if you take a positive divided by a negative, that's definitely gonna be negative. And if you take one and you divide it by tinier and tinier numbers, those tiny numbers will go into one more and more times. And so the limit here will be negative infinity. On the other hand, if x goes to one from above, then these numbers will always be positive. As x gets closer and closer to one, they'll be tinier and tinier. So we'll have one divided by tinier and tinier positive numbers. Well, if you have one, that's positive, divided by another positive, it's gotta be positive. So this time the limit's gonna be positive, but it's going to be positive infinity. Okay, now, negative infinity and infinity aren't really numbers. So we feel kind of conflicted about saying whether or not the limit exists, but here, since as you go for the left, if you look at this function, as you come from the left, you're going to negative infinity. But as you come to one from the right, you're going to positive infinity. We, we definitely wouldn't say that this limit exists at all, right? It's kind of splitting in this case. Just because you're close to one doesn't mean the outputs are super huge positive numbers or super huge negative numbers. It could be one or the other depending on how you get close to one. So if the limits had agreed, if it had been um, plus infinity and plus infinity, then we'd say the limit was positive infinity, even though positive infinity doesn't really exist in the sense that positive infinity is just a concept of the outputs getting bigger and bigger, not actually approaching a particular number since infinity isn't a number. So in this case, <clears throat> the, we have an infinite limit, but what comes out are two different kinds of infinity, so they don't match. But if the problem had been just slightly different, if we were to square the denominator here. Now the left and right hand limits would be the same because whether x is a little bit more than one or a little bit less than one, what's happening here is x gets close to one is that this will be tiny. Whether it's positive or negative, if you square this tiny number, it's just going to be a positive tiny number. So we, are ha we have one divided by tinier and tinier positives. So if we have these tiny numbers going into one, a positive divided by a positive is positive. Now the left-hand limit is infinity. You can see the right-hand limit would be the same. because As x gets close to one, this number, because it's squared, is going to have to be positive, and it's going to be tinier and tinier. So we have the same thing on the right, tinier and tinier positives as x gets closer and closer to one from above. So this limit is infinity in this case they match. They're both positive infinity. So if they match, we'll say the limit as x tends to 1 without regard to side. So we don't put a plus or minus after that. The limit as x tends to 1 in this case is positive infinity. So what we're saying is that these numbers, as x gets close to 1, these numbers get bigger and bigger without bound. In this problem, we have a left and right hand limit as x approaches negative two. If we, if we look at what's going on here, if, if x is really close to negative two, this will be close to four, and um, that'll be negative three times negative two would be close to six, and then plus two. So the top is getting closer and closer to 12. Um, what we have down below, though, negative two cubed would be negative eight. Negative four times close to negative two would be close to eight. So we have uh, the numbers getting smaller and smaller down here. So I need to figure out, am I taking 12, or numbers that are close to 12, and dividing them by tinier and tinier positives, or tinier and tinier negatives? I think I could probably walk through it, but it might help if I just try to simplify first. I think I see some factoring that could happen, and uh, I might as well if it will clean the problem up a little bit.
So let's factor the top, which we can factor as x minus 2 times x minus 1. And at the bottom, we can pull an x out for sure, and that would leave us x squared minus 4, which we recognize as a difference of squares. So we have x minus 2 times x minus 1 all over x times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And the x minus 2's cancel. So simplifying, I think we've made this a little bit clearer. x tends to negative 2 from the left of all that's left in the top is x minus 1. Down below, we have x times x plus 2. OK. So what we have here, if x is getting close to negative 2, the top is getting close to negative 3. This x is getting close to negative 2. And then this, if x is approaching negative 2, but it's a little bit less than negative 2, so it would be like negative 2.1, negative 2.01, and so on, um, then this one is more negative. The x is more negative than 2, so you add them together, and you still have a negative. So we have tinier and tinier negatives as x approaches negative 2. Now, we've got a negative 3 over negative 2 divided by a negative. So that's going to be, it's going to have to be uh, negative, right? Because if you have three negatives um, multiplied or divided, then that's going to be negative. And we can see that it, there, these uh, tiny numbers will go into here more and more times. And so we're going to have negative infinity as we approach negative 2 from the left. On the other hand, to do this one, we could do the same simplifying. It's just that we're approaching negative 2 from the right. So we do the same simplifying. What we're taking the limit of becomes this. If we're approaching negative 2 from the right, then the top is going to get close to negative 3. And this x will get close to negative 2. But now, we're, uh, x is always negative 2 plus a little bit. So it's a little bit larger than negative 2. So that when you add 2 to it, it's positive. So as x gets close to negative 2, it gets smaller and smaller. But it's definitely positive because it's approaching negative 2 from the high side. So we have negative 3 halves. Or you can think of that as 3 halves divided by negative 3 over negative 2. You think of it as, as uh, 3 over 2. So we have that divided by tinier and tinier positives. So if we have a, all three of our numbers are positive then, then it, this limit is going to be a positive number. And this tiny, as this gets tinier and tinier, as x gets closer and closer to negative 2, it will go into 3 halves more and more times. And so this is going to be plus infinity.